Tom Veitch has ridden the last train out, and I wanted to take a few quick minutes to reflect on his legacy with the Star Wars franchise at large. He wrote Dark Empire, which was a comic trilogy that formed a sequel to the original trilogy, much as Timothy Zahn did with the Thrawn trilogy. Now, in that trilogy, we had Emperor Palpatine come back to life through alchemy and dark science, and you also had Palpatine unleashing a fleet of super weapons. Both of these ideas were adopted into the Rise of Skywalker. So instead of having the Death Star laser equipped Star Destroyers, you had the world devastators, which were these machines that kind of reminded me of as I battled them on Rogue Squadron on the N64 as a kid, as these flying vacuum cleaners that, much like the Penguin's machine from the Batman film, the first Adam West one, reduced all the material to its raw natural elements. It's a horrifying nature having a weapon that, instead of being a projectile that shoots something, it subtracts from it. This is something they used in the Prometheus comics with the engineers having a weapon that subtracted raw elements instead of launching something from it. So we also saw Luke get seduced by the dark side in the trilogy and be redeemed. And this was a fulfillment of what George Lucas teased in the original trilogy. Because in, you know, especially Return of the Jedi, Luke has that moment where he's almost tempted, but he doesn't succumb to it. And so much of, you know, what Empire seeded was the tightrope that he walked. Now, we knew all along, especially with the costume reveal at the end when Luke lifted the flap on his tunic and revealed the white underneath, thus symbolizing he was always retaining his good amidst the darkness. We never got that kind of fulfillment into temptation, and instead that got relegated to the sequel trilogy where he gave into his paranoia about Kylo Ren becoming the next space Hitler, I would say, fulfilling that argument I heard in college about what would you do if you encountered baby Hitler and you had the chance to correct history, which it's a morbid way to phrase things. But, so Mr. Veitch, you know, with his comic series, managed to change the scope of how it would the EU would go forward. Because now we had characters who could come back to life, right? Now in the Disney uh, universe of Star Wars, we have characters who are coming back to life through various means, such as Darth Maul, and I'm going to argue Cad Bane, especially from the end of The Book of Boba Fett. So just looking forward, you know, it's funny. You have to look almost backward at the same time to see how much uh, what Veitch did was paving the way forward. He brought back Palpatine. He brought back Palpatine's uh, weapon, weapons of destruction. The, and so it, so much of it was cribbed into the rise of Skywalker, yet there wasn't a footnote. Now, I know the nature of contributing stories for corporations is you're not going to get any acknowledgments, financial, or at most a cursory thank you at the end. I mean, look what happened with Jim Starlin for Marvel. But what I am saying, though, is so much of what the sequel trilogy has been built on was took off with what he did with uh, the Dark Empire trilogy. Now, I know he had an acclaimed run with the uh, older, the uh, Knights of the Old Republic series, which I haven't broached yet. I'm intending to. But anyway, I just wanted to take a minute just to reflect on how so much of this new trilogy was based off some of the elements that he seeded in his comic series from the 90s. Now, for those who played Rogue Squadron, you got a chance to enact one of the storylines he created when you had the mission taking on the World Devastators. I had many moments of throwing my controller across the room as those things were impossible to destroy. But anyway, I just wanted to thank Mr. Veitch for the great reading memories and also expanding the lore of one of my favorite franchises as a child. This is Rob Free, signing out.